In the last past century, the world has spent trillions of dollars in enforcing anti-drug laws and fighting drug trafficking. However, every new strategy used to fight illegal drug trafficking has either not worked at all or made the situation worse. The world spent annually at least 100 billion US dollars in drug enforcement and almost double in incarceration. The results are half a million drug-related homicides a year globally, an illicit global market worth between 360 billion US dollars and 650 billion US dollars, if not more. The corruption of institutions of producing and transit countries, millions of people in prison, and hundreds of billions of dollars in lost opportunities annually. Why is drug prohibition such a failure? The answer is basic economics, supply and demand. As governments around the world target the supply side of drug trafficking without paying attention to the demand, the price of illicit drugs skyrockets. The result is possibly one of the most lucrative industries there is after counterfeit goods with markups of up to 17,000% in places like New York. And with such massive profits, the drug trafficking organizations compete violently for the control of production areas and trafficking routes to consumer markets. It is no surprise that the countries and territories caught in these routes have higher rates of violence than the rest of the world. This has led a growing number of people to back initiatives to decriminalize, that is, the lifting or lessening of punishment for possession of illicit drugs or legalize illicit drugs altogether. The thinking goes that by legalizing illicit drugs, legal and honest drug vendors will displace illegal drug distributors by outpricing them and offer a safer alternative. This would severely cut down the profits of criminal organizations and curtail the capabilities to corrupt societies and the purchase of weapons. It will also allow for the redistribution of resources towards treatment of addiction and reduce the mortality due to overdosing with a better control of quality. So far, most initiatives taken have been concerning the decriminalization or regulation of cannabis, most notably are the cases of Portugal, the first country to decriminalize the personal possession of all drugs, and Uruguay, the first country to fully legalize cannabis. Most policies of legalization or decriminalization are of limited reach. Nevertheless, the results have been promising. In all cases, a reduction in local crime, overdose death, and HIV transmission have been observed. While these policies targeting the, the cannabis market show promising results, they are nowhere near enough to seriously damage drug traffickers. This is because marijuana sales make up a small portion of the revenue. In the case of Mexican cartels, it is estimated to be only up to one-sixth of their profits and falling. Their real money makers are cocaine, heroin and methamphetamine and they are now pushing hard on this. Drug legalization and decriminalization have focused on cannabis because the latter is perceived as a far softer drug compared to cocaine, heroin, and meth. So what can be done? Well, legalize those two, but with a catch. Only the state gets to sell them. Here's the idea. The illicit drugs are to be sold in state-run facilities where consumers will obtain a membership ID card and may buy drugs in quantities not enough to risk overdose but with price ceilings so low that they only cover production. The intention here is to purposely cause a situation of controlled scarcity. Let me explain. With prices artificially so low, drug traffickers simply cannot compete, the profits will disappear and they will have to sell at a huge loss. How much of a loss? If only the US implemented this nationwide, that loss would be around 100 billion US dollars. 
that's a hundred billion US dollars worth of bribes unpaid, guns not bought, black market deals being broken. If the state manages to keep production just enough to satisfy local demand without making leftover for export and keeping strict control of distribution, drug traffickers will be forced to abandon the market altogether and fight another less lucrative trade. The hope here is that drug trafficking organizations being dealt such a critical blow should be left weak enough for the countries infested by them can finally dismantle them for good.